Well, I'm Janae Hill, and I'll be doing Mysterious. My family was the Brady Bunch in the 1960s. My two brothers and I were blessed with the perfect parents. We lived in a modest two-bedroom house in what was considered a good neighborhood. My father, Stefan, supported his family as a fireman. I always felt special when he winked at me and called me Tiger. My mother, Catherine, was a woman who glowed with love for her children. Her greatest asset was her determination. Mom always had ideas, and she took command of all family matters. As a small child, I probably had a voice that carried farther than others. I also had the unfortunate luck of getting caught at mischief, even though my brothers and I were often committing the same crimes. In the beginning, I was disciplined by being set in a corner of our bedroom. Being set in a corner doesn't seem like harsh punishment. It seems normal. Most young children are put in time out from time to time. As children grow, punishment usually grows also to being grounded. But what happens when punishment grows out of control and the child becomes abused? Who speaks for the child? In his true story, David Pelzer speaks for himself as an adult. He experienced torture and abuse on a daily basis. Through it all, he survived and shares his story in A Child Called It by David Pelzer. About the time she started sitting in the corner, her behavior began to radically change. And my relationship with mom drastically went from discipline to punishment that grew out of control. When mother decided that the corn treatment was no longer effective, I graduated to the mirror treatment. Mother would grab me and smash my head against the cold mirror, smearing my tear-streaked face on the slick reflective glass. She would then order me to say over and over again, I'm a bad boy. I'm a bad boy. I'm a bad boy. I was then forced to stand, staring at the mirror, my hands locked to my side, weaving back and forth. As I grew, my chores increased, and my father spent less time at home and more at work. He made excuses to the family, but I didn't believe him. I often sat, shivering with fear, hoping for some reason he might not leave this time. Mother had a favorite game for me while father was away. She sent me to clean the bathroom with her usual time limits. But this time, she put a bucket filled with a mixture of ammonia and Clorox in the room with me and closed the door. First time mother did this, she informed me that she had read about it in a newspaper and wanted to try it. Even though I acted as if I were frightened, I really wasn't. I was ignorant about what was going to happen. Only when mother closed the door and ordered me not to open it again did I begin to worry. With the room sealed, the air began to quickly change. I curled up in the corner of the bathroom and watched a fine gray mist swirl towards the ceiling. As I breathed in the fumes, I began spitting up. My throat felt like it was on fire. After a couple minutes, it was raw. The gas from the reaction of ammonia and Clorox made my eyes water, but I was frantic about not being able to meet mother's time limits. After a few more minutes, I thought I would cough up my insides. To survive mother's new game, I had to use my head. Lying on the tiled floor and stretching my body, I used my foot and pushed the bucket to the door. In case mother opened that door, I wanted her to get a snootful of her own medicine. I curled up in the opposite corner of the bathroom and used my cleaning rag to cover my face. I wet the rag in the toilet. I didn't dare turn on the water in the sink. Breathing through the rag, I watched the mist inch its way closer and closer to the floor. In about half an hour, Mother opened the door and told me to empty the bucket into the drain in the garage. Downstairs, I coughed up blood for over an hour. Of all Mother's punishments, I hated the gas chamber game the most. Unbelievably, her behavior became even more bizarre. One Wednesday afternoon, I was forced to tell my den mother that I had been a bad boy and could not attend the Cub Scout meeting. The den mother smiled politely, saying that she would like me to come to the next one. That was the last time I ever saw her. Once home, Mother ordered me to strip off my clothes and stand by the kitchen stove. Mother claimed that she had seen me that very day playing on the grass, which was absolutely forbidden by her rules. I quickly answered that I never played on the grass. I knew Mother had somehow made a mistake. My reward for observing Mother's rules and telling the truth was a hard punch in the face. Mother then reached over and turned on the gas burners to the kitchen stove. She told me that she had read an article about a mom who had her son lie on top of a hot stove. She sneered at me. You've made my life a living hell. Now it's time I showed you what hell is like. Gripping my arm, Mother held it in the orange-blue flame. My skin seemed to explode from the heat. I could smell the scorched hairs from my burnt arm. But as hard as I fought, I could not make Mother let go. 
Finally, I dropped my hands and knees on the floor and tried to blow cool air on my burnt arm. Mother then ordered me to climb on top of the stove so she could watch me burn. I refused, crying and pleading. I watched the flames, praying the gas might run out. Suddenly, I began to realize the longer I could keep myself off the top of the stove, the better my chances were for surviving. I knew my brother Ron would soon be coming home from his scout meeting, and I knew Mother never acted this way when anyone else was in the house. In order to survive, I had to buy time. Finally, I heard the front door fly open. It was Ron. My heart surged with relief. Mother would not burn me while he was home. Sitting downstairs, I could hear Mother talking to Ron, telling him how proud she was of him and how she didn't have to worry about Ron becoming like me a bad boy. As time went by, not only did the abuse increase and become more creative, but my mother began to drink heavily too. I lived in the basement and garage with only a cot for a bed. One night, hours after my brothers had gone to bed, mother ordered me to return upstairs. I dreaded every step. You see, mother had drained me emotionally and physically. I didn't know what she had planned. I simply wished she would beat me and just get it over with. As I opened the door, a calmness filled my soul and the house is dark except for a single light on. She smiled and I could tell by her slumped shoulders that the booze had her in a deep six. Mother got up and strolled over to the kitchen sink. She opened the cabinet and removed a bottle of ammonia. She got a tablespoon and put some ammonia into it. As she began to creep towards me, I backed away and my head struck the countertop by the stove. I almost laughed inside. That's all? That's it? All she's going to do is make me swallow some of this? I wasn't afraid. As mother knelt down, she told me that only speed would save me. I opened my mouth without hesitation. Mother rammed the cold spoon deep into my throat. Again, I told myself this was all too easy. But a moment later, I couldn't breathe, and I stood wobbling in front of Mother. My throat seized, and I dropped my hands and knees and pounded the floor. Bubble my brain screamed! I pounded the floor, trying to concentrate on the bubble of air stuck in my esophagus. Tears of panic streamed down my cheeks. After a few seconds, I could feel the force of my pounding fists weaken. My fingernails scraped the floor. I became fixed on it, but all the colors just seemed to run together. I began to feel myself drift away, and I knew I was going to die. Finally, I came to my senses upon Mother slapping me on the back. The force of her blows made me burp, and I was able to breathe again. As I forced huge gulps of air back into my lungs, Mother returned to her glass of booze. She took a long drink, gazed down at me, and blew a mist of air in my direction. Now, that wasn't so hard, was it? Mother said before dismissing me down to my cot.